This video is going to take a look at the structure and function of various organelles. We're going to start with the cell membrane. In terms of its structure and location, it is known as a phospholipid bilayer, meaning that it is actually made up of two distinct layers of these molecules called phospholipids. Phospholipids have a hydrophilic or water-loving end and a water-hating end. The fact that that water-hating end is in the middle creates a barrier making the cell membrane selectively permeable, meaning that only some things can get through while other things cannot. Large molecules can't and charged positive or negative molecules can't get through either. In terms of the function, cell membrane is to support and protect the cells and it controls the movement of materials both in and out. Cell membranes are present in all cells. It keeps everything inside needed to control the movement. In terms of an analogy, this would be like a security guard. Cell walls, an analogy would be like they're like support beams in the walls, but their structure is they're the outermost layer of a plant cell. They are incredibly rigid and they're made up of cellulose, but because they are so thick and so rigid, they must be perforated, meaning having holes to allow things and materials to still get both in and out of the cell. Their function is to support the plant cells, provide an extra layer of protection, and provide rigidity so that plants don't kind of fall or flop over when there isn't enough water or trigger pressure to keep the plant standing upright. So cell walls are found in plants, but they're also found in some fungi and bacterial cells. Cytoplasm. This is a jelly-like substance that fills the cell. It is primarily made up of water, salts, and proteins dissolved within the, the cytoplasm. It also contains all of the organelles. So all of the organelles are floating around inside the cytoplasm. Cytosol is the cytoplasm that is not inside organelles. So sometimes you'll see those two terms, cytoplasm, cytosol. Cytosol is the cytoplasm not inside an, an organelle. Cytoplasm is not inside the nucleus. That's given a specific name of its own. The function of cytoplasm is to support and protect organelles so that they're not constantly running into each other, bashing into each other, and damaging uh, the, their functions. Also allows for the movement of substances so things can kind of move from one part of the cell to the other. All cells have cytoplasm. In terms of analogy, this would be like the air, the space in the building, allowing things to move around inside a workplace. Cytoplasm, as we said, allows for movement. There are actually flows and streams within the cell that allow for materials to move within it. The nucleus. The nucleus is generally large and oval shaped. Most cells have one nucleus. Some don't have any. Some have more than one, but most cells only have one. It contains the cell's DNA, and it's surrounded by its own protective layer known as the nuclear membrane. It's actually a double layer because the DNA needs to be so highly protected, and it is filled with nucleoplasm. It has similar structure as cytoplasm, but because it's in the nucleus, it is referred to as nucleoplasm. Functions of the nucleus is to contain and protect all of the genetic information known as DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, and this allows it to control the activities of the cell by regulating which genes or portions of the DNA are expressed or used at any given point in time. The nucleus is found in all cells except for prokaryotes, so all eukaryotic cells have it. In terms of analogy, this would be like the executive offices or the area where all the decisions, big decisions are made in a company. The nucleus, if we look at its structure, like we said, has a nuclear membrane or nuclear envelope, must have pores to allow uh, material both in and out, but it is a double layer giving extra protection to the DNA inside. The nucleolus is inside the nucleus. It is a very dense region, so it's usually the darkest portion of the nucleus. Its function is to make ribosomes. Found nucleus is found in all cells except for prokaryotes. So any cell that has a nucleus has a nucleolus. Its uh, analogy would be like the CEOs, the people actually doing um, all of the decision making within the nucleus. Rough endoplasmic reticulum, sometimes referred to as the RER, is a network of flattened sacs of membranes. So if you look at this image up here, you can see that it is continuous membranes that has many, many folds on it. 
It is embedded with ribosomes. That is why it is known as rough, because when looked at under a microscope, it looks like it has the little bumps. Those bumps are ribosomes. It is directly connected to the nucleus. When you're trying to identify it in a cell, look for the nucleus. Attached to it is the RER. Its function is to create proteins or protein synthesis. It also then packages those proteins in vesicles or containers that allows for dis distribution within the cell. All cells, except for prokaryotes, have an RER. In terms of analogy, this would be like the assembly line of a company. The smooth anaplasmic reticulum, or SER, is found attached to the RER. It is also a network of flattened membranes. It does not have ribosomes. That's the distinguishing feature in terms of structure. In terms of their function, the smooth ER uh, make lipids or fats as well as hormones. These fats and hormones are then packaged in vesicles or in little packages of membranes, which are transported within and used within the cell. There's also a lot of smooth ER when there's need for detoxification. The smooth ER is what break down poisons and drugs and alcohols like into your cells that could do damage. All cells except for prokaryotes have a smooth ER. In terms of analogy, it's also like an assembly line. Vesicles, as we've mentioned a few times, their structure is basically a bubble. So you have a cell membrane forming a bubble that allows it to have a space inside. These vesicles can fuse or join with plasma membranes or any membrane within the cell. So the vesicles can contain something, take it somewhere else, and then dump its contents into another organelle. So their function is to transport materials, both within the cell, but also take materials into the cell and allow them to be ejected from the cell. All cells except for prokaryotes have vesicles. Analogy would be a forklift because it's moving things around a workspace. Golgi bodies or Golgi apparatus, Golgi complex, all mean the same thing. If you were to look for it, it also looks like a, a stack of flattened membranes, often confused with the ERs. How you tell them apart is the Golgi body is not near the nucleus. Okay, so that's the key differentiation. The ERs are found near the, near the nucleus, the Golgi bodies are not. The function of the Golgi is to take vesicles from the ER, take the contents, modify them, fix them up, put them in, in their appropriate um, orientations, then package them in vesicles that will then leave the cell. So the vesicles from the Golgi bodies leave the cells. All cells except for prokaryotes have Golgi bodies. This would be like a packaging department of a company. So you see how in this image here, we have a nucleus with the RER and the smooth ER attached, creating vesicles. Those vesicles would join with a Golgi. The Golgi then further processes the proteins, the lipids, the hormones. They're then put into vesicles and sent and secreted out into either the bloodstream or into another cell that can be used. Ribosomes. Ribosomes are two distinct protein subunits that come together to act as one functioning unit. They can be found free floating around in the cytoplasm or attached to the rough ER. Their function, they build proteins. So yes, they're made of proteins, but their job is to then make more proteins. All cells have ribosomes. This would be like the assembly line workers. They're actually doing the work. Mitochondria. Mitochondria is a peanut shaped organelle it has a double membrane. There's a smooth outer membrane, as you can see in the diagram, and the inner membrane is folded. These folds are known as cristae, and their purpose is to increase surface area so more reactions can happen. Interestingly enough, mitochondria have their own DNA. It's known as maternal DNA because it comes directly from your mother. Their function is to release energy from glucose to generate ATP energy. This is cellular respiration. This is why the mitochondria is sometimes referred to as the powerhouse of the cell. They make the energy needed for cells to function. They are the site of aerobic respiration. All cells, except for prokaryotes, have mitochondria. Analogy, like a power generator. So if we look at the mitochondria and cellular respiration, they take glucose, C6H1206, combine it with the oxygen that we breathe in to create carbon dioxide, which is a waste product we get rid of, water, it's a waste product we breathe out as well, but ATP is the energy currency that our cells can then use to function and do other processes. 
Chloroplast is a similar peanut or oval shaped. They're generally green in color because they contain chlorophyll, which allows them to absorb sunlight energy. They also have a double membrane, smooth on the outside, and then stacks known as thylakoids on the inside. They're filled with their own gel-like fluid known as stroma. Function of the chloroplast is to use energy from the sun to make glucose. We know that as photosynthesis. In the process, they release oxygen. It's one of the reasons why trees are so important to us is they produce the oxygen that we need to breathe. Chloroplasts are found in plants and algae. An algae would be like a battery. They're not actually creating the energy like the mitochondria, but they can, they're creating products that can be used to make energy. So if we look at photosynthesis, they take carbon dioxide and water, and in using light and the chlorophyll pigments that they have, they then create glucose, oxygen, and water. The glucose and the oxygen then go to the mitochondria to make energy. Lysosomes are a small, round, bubble shape. They have a single membrane, and they contain what are known as hydrolytic enzymes, or chemicals that break down other materials. So they're used to break down food molecules that come in. So maybe a molecule is too big, it needs to be broken down smaller so your cells can use it. They also digest old cell parts that can then be recycled. So in animals, they're very common. They're not common in plants. Something like a Venus flytrap would have lysosomes. Most plants don't. Analogy would be like a recycling program. Vacuoles are fluid-filled sacs, and they're the largest organelle found in plants. Their job is storage, so food storage, until they can be broken down by lysosomes. Uh, they might store water uh, in, because you never know when it's going to rain, a plant's going to get more water. They also um, collect and pump water out of freshwater protists or single-celled organisms to allow them to move. So vacuole's primary function is uh, storage, but it can have other roles in different types of organisms. Animals, some animal cells, like your fat cell, will have a few vacuoles, not common in animal cells, but plants all have a single large central vacuole. This would be like storage closets or compartments. So if we look at the endo or inside membrane system, we've got endoplasmic reticulum, we have Golgi's, we have lysosomes, we have uh, old organelles like mitochondria. All of these membranes interact with each other. So we call it an endomembrane system because all of those membranes are going to be interacting to allow that cell to function. Cytoskeleton are made of fiber, fibers and tubules. Their job is structure and support and to move things around. So these are found in all cells except for prokaryotes. An analogy would be like reinforcement themes. That is it for cell organelles.